for their hard work during one of the most difficult years we ever had in public education. And they were so excited. Ellen Bernstein with the Albuquerque Teachers Federation negotiated a deal with APS to use federal stimulus money to give one-time $1,000 bonuses to full-time staff and $500 bonuses to part-time staff. I was very disheartened to learn that the New Mexico State Auditor's Office raised concerns that our proposed efforts to compensate you violated the New Mexico State Constitution, and more specifically, the anti-donation clause. We know that there are hard-working women and men, APS employees, including my wife, who were, uh, should be compensated appropriately. But at the end of the day, the Office of the State Auditor is always going to follow the law. State Auditor Brian Colon says all other state employees can't get these bonuses, so teachers will be held to that same standard. Just that feeling of elation and then let down has to be so hard. APS, the state auditor, the Albuquerque Teachers Federation, and others are now negotiating to cut a new deal. I hope it's promises made, promises delayed. Now, the Teachers Federation tells me that they are hoping to fight for those deals and they hope to plan and hammer out one soon. Reporting live here in Albuquerque, I'm Stella Sun, KOAT Action 7 News. More than 15,000 employees work for APS. Here are the state's latest COVID numbers. 167 new cases today, the total now more than 202,000, but also three deaths for 4,254 fatal cases overall. But some good news, more than 188,000 COVID sufferers have recovered. New numbers from the state giving us more information about the New Mexicans who've been hospitalized with COVID. Since the pandemic began, more than 13,000 people have gone into the hospital to be treated for the virus. Of those, 3,000 died. That means more than 22% of all of our state's COVID hospitalizations died. And new COVID numbers from the state involving kids. There have been more than 29,000 kids who have been infected with the virus. More than 1,000 of them infants. More than 4,000 were aged 1 to 4 and almost 10,000 in kids 5 to 11. 8,500 as well in 12 to 15 year olds. And speaking of New Mexico kids, health leaders say they may feel the effects of COVID in a different way, but it could have a lasting impact on them. Because children in general have been asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic, they haven't gotten as much attention. And yet being at home, being away from in-person schooling, I think may have significant impact for years to come. Right now, health experts are working on strategies for schools to stay open during the pandemic. Here are the current vaccine numbers in New Mexico. 54% over the age of 16 have been fully vaccinated. 64% have received at least one dose. Now, these numbers are from the Department of Health. As more New Mexicans get the vaccine, more women are speaking up about side effects they're getting after rolling up their sleeve. Brittany Hope found out some questions about female reproductive health are just now being asked. Changes to menstrual cycles after women get the COVID-19 vaccine. It is not an uncommon side effect from what I'm guessing, from what I'm hearing. It's something Dr. Claire Elliott Herrick is seeing in her patients at Presbyterian Rust. And I've been hearing a lot of buzz about it in my own circle. So I went to social media and asked if any of my followers had issues with their periods, birth control, or hormones after that shot. Here's a look at the few of the responses, which I'm keeping anonymous. One woman described terrible cramps, PMS, and a heavier flow. Another said, I got my period the day after I got the second shot, two weeks early. A couple of women said they got their periods extremely early or much later than usual. I heard from a dad who said this, we thought my daughter was pregnant. She missed two months. And another chunk of women didn't notice any changes. None of those women felt comfortable going on camera to talk with me about their experiences. But we learned that when those vaccine trials were happening last year, way before the vaccine was approved for clinics like this, women in those trials weren't talking about changes in their cycles either. Why? Because they weren't being asked. This was not one of the side effects that people were asked about when the vaccine trials were done. And it's not a common question in many, many different types of trials. We don't ask these questions of women very often. So I reached out to the vaccine companies to learn why. Moderna, after multiple emails, never got back to me. Johnson & Johnson, in part, said this. Menstrual changes were not tracked as an endpoint within clinical research trials for a Janssen COVID-19 vaccine. And Pfizer said in its phase three clinical trial with more than 44,000 people, half of which were women, 
Abnormal menstruation or reproductive changes have not been a reported adverse event. They did say, though, those symptoms would have to have been reported to Pfizer by the woman herself. Because these questions are now just starting to be asked, there's still a lot to learn. There is just not good information to say how common it is and just so difficult to know if it's actually caused by the vaccine or something else. Even so, Dr. Herrick says if you do experience changes, it shouldn't affect you long term and it won't have any impact on fertility. So there's an inflammatory reaction because that's what it's meant to do. Sometimes there can be little differences in the menstrual cycles when there are inflammatory changes in the body. They are temporary. This is not going to have any long standing effect. Here's her advice. If your period came early or late, heavier or lighter, or you got cramps, no need to report it to your doctor. It should go back to normal after a month or so. If it persists for more than one to two cycles, that there may be something else going on that should be investigated. And anytime a woman has really excessive loss, so soaking through more than a pad in an hour, that can lead to anemia. And so she should seek medical attention for that, whatever the cause is. She says the vaccine is safe for women. So if you're eligible to roll up your sleeve, she urges you to do so. This vaccine was trying to get out as fast as possible to save lives. And yes, it'd be nice to know if menstrual side effects was part of it, but I think they did the right thing in prioritizing saving lives, saving hospital beds, um, keeping our communities safe as quickly as possible. In Albuquerque, Brittany Hope, KOAT Action 7 News. We also asked the state about this. They said changes to menstrual cycles could be a co-founder. That means those changes are happening after you get the vaccine, but they may not be related to the vaccine. <laughs>